Nobody sitting all alone in a room. Come hear the music play. Debbie Quinones is a longtime East Harlem community activist who founded Muevete, the Circle of Sisters, the Urban Women Society, Galleria 106, Boricua Icons Initiatives, Nuestro Museo Action Community, Committee, Coquito Masters, Young Bucks Sports, the Friends of Art Park Alliance, the Sicily Tyson Street Naming, uh, which was recently this past fall, with another honoree that will be joining us on the panel, Ms. Taino Traveso. And um, where'd I go? Okay. It's a lot. I'm not reading this whole thing. <laughs> the Afro Bembe and Green Vibrations Festival, Healthy Start, Irish House, the East Harlem Board of Tourism, the East Harlem Council for Cultural Arts and Tourism, Boricua Icons Initiatives, Staten Island, you get my gist. Okay. She is a pure community activist. I got so many in this room, it's not funny. It's like your like your energy is like a all right, Miss Debbie, are you ready? Yes. Before I begin, I ask for a blessing for the ancestors, past and present community mothers, that my words honor their work and spark a light of inspiration in you. I acknowledge and appreciate this opportunity to share space with my colleagues on the panel today and look forward to their presentations. I want to thank Maria Ponte for your gracious invitation, your vision, and your outstanding work. When I was first asked to speak, I quickly realized that I had to embark on an honest and thoughtful process that brought up the memories and emotions of past events, successes and challenges, and even unexpected closure where I forgave myself and others. Putting pen to paper was transformative. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity to embrace this next phase and check new life boxes. The title of today's program is um, Elders Telling My Story, and damn it, I'm an elder. Um, <laughs> I don't call it that. I have been blessed to work and learn from women with diverse backgrounds and skills that have all contributed to the place that has brought me here today, and I dedicate this to them and mom. And I gotta say this quick, because if not, I'll start crying. The title of my talk is Songs from the battlefield while wearing red lipstick. <laughs> the, type, the topics are the shoulders we stand on, the power of identity, organizing tips, soul shining, and power transformation. The women organizers that came before us had less resources to overcome and transform oppressive systems. It was a sad situation that is often romanticized. These women faced physical, domestic violence, no access to credit, birth control, home or business ownerships, and a, or even a safe place to work. Most recently, sexual abuse victims from the 1970s have come forth to seek accountability. They were told back then not to make waves because strides in la lucha would be jeopardized. Imagine having to hold in that violation all these years and then see that motherfucker be praised for his work. I swore I wasn't gonna curse, but I had to. <laughs> I had to. Just, just whoa. Um, I had to. So the thing is, is that these women face so much, right? But we also have to acknowledge the strong and close relationship with our African American sisters, the lessons and teachings from the civil rights movement. Early Latina organizers, no, Latinas in particular, had to endure the effects of intersectionality with race, gender identity, sexual orientation, sex, gender expression, disability, class, and all the discrimination things that just messed us up, totally messed us up. The concept was developed by Kimberly Crenshaw the founder of the African American uh, Policy Forum at Columbia University. I have to say that this is really important to understand because sometimes we find ourselves thinking that it was so romantic and it was just great. Early Latina organizers face family abandonment, stigma, and racism because there was no representation of leadership in education, policy, um, civil service or any other, uh, any other industry. 
Most economic opportunities were relegated to the domestic sector. How many of us here had mommies and titis and abuelas that were seamstresses? They had no access to power. This leads me to Olga Mendez, the first Puerto Rican woman that was ever elected on the mainland to serve in state legislature from 1978 to 2004. And I once asked her, how did she manage the madness of Albany, yeah. notorious for scandal and corruption? And she told me that when she first went up there, that she wanted to work with unity and kindness. And she quickly realized that it was a men's locker room. And in order for them to respect her, she had to push those notions aside and demonstrate her capacity to fight, survive, in dale cocotazos. She then said, quote, quote, yeah, they may have had the balls, but we have the cups, and we hope you are. <laughs> and if anybody knows Olga, that was Olga. Um, she and early Latina organizers broke molds of image, identity, navigated the sexual politics of that time, built diverse partnerships and relationships that pushed back societal expectations and institutional racist constructs that sought to suppress them and push back their power. These women embraced and embodied and promoted standards of academic excellence, command of communication and appearance. When these women walked into a room, it was on serving power and glamour that just left you speechless. Yolanda Sanchez once told me, there's workhorses and there's show horses. And they both have to look good. <laughs> you know that's right. Um, and then, with these luchadoras, you had to come correct in order for them to acknowledge you. It didn't happen overnight just because you were down and went to one meeting. You were watched for your responses to issues, observed in social situations. These women fought and partied hard, made enemies, faced physical attacks, vandalism to their cars, their homes, were targets of political hits. They were firm but fair, loving, supportive, protective, compelling storytellers with the best dirty jokes ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure y'all heard them. Um, but they also had the highest expectations of you because they saw you before you saw yourself. The common practice was to identify Latinas in different industries and build a network. How many people here remember Alice Cardona? No lie. She was known as the Puerto Rican phone book. Why? Because if you had any issue on any topic, Alice had a contact. All you had to say was Alice sent you and you were in, made and under her protection. The power of this network was challenged in 1995 when in China, attending the United Nations Women's Conference, a member of our delegation was accidentally killed. In China, okay? Alice and Yolanda went into a room and emerged a few hours later to announce that arrangements had been made for the transport and pickup for the body back to the United States and that there will be a memorial at the hotel. To me, this was the greatest example of organizing that I had ever, ever witnessed. And I only strive that I can do something like that. The access to and stabilization provided by that women's sister network saved lives with everything from shared childcare, housing, homes, apartments, clothing, arrangements to and escorts for medical procedures. And you know what I'm talking about. They were the original ride or die sisters. Now you know here in El Barrio, it is a well known fact that women of color were the driving force behind the scenes and did significant amount of work during the era of the anti-poverty programs. Today, I am pleased to say that that network still exists, where we continue to support each other, rely on each other, I feel you all here, and I love you all. The experiences and hard, hard choices made by these early Latina women created and shaped 
the, the image and character archetype of the Latina organizer that I am today. We must respect and honor the paths that they took and not judge them. Now it is my responsibility to continue that legacy. So I want you to think about your root causes and introduction to activism or community service. Let's be clear, right now we have work because just because of who you are and what you look like will be a barrier and a wall. And I have to ask, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? How are you building, how are you preparing for that moment? How are you building your capacities? Many organizers mistakenly are comfortable with the line that is drawn between us and our role models. We never think that they get tired or that they have their own issues that make them human in our eyes because they are forever that superhuman person, right? That has it all together. But what we don't realize is that we must step up. We must step up. You know why? Because they're waiting for us so that they can exhale. How many people here know what BC is? Before Christ? <laughs> Just saying. What about BI? Before internet? Thank you. <laughs> so I don't have any fancy emojis or QR codes or none of that. None of that. Or a magical YouTube channel to recommend. All I have is my experience as a Puerto Rican cisgender woman from El Barrio with some, some tips and community organizing. Whew, wow, that's a lot. So let's begin. Mend the part of the world that is within your reach. While we want world peace and we want all this other stuff, mend the part of the world that is right in front of you. Support women events. Even if it's not your thing, if you know, they, they like trees or whatever, support them so that you can build your network. Stop wasting time on the things that you can't change. Seriously. Understand the difference between a partnership and a collaboration because there's a time difference. Discuss and agree how decisions will be made for every project, every time, even with the same people. Just because you worked with someone before does not mean that you have to use the same tools, run the meeting the same way, have the same context, the role, or expectation of participation. Don't get pigeonholed into a role that limits your growth. Sometimes this is a tactic of sabotage. And you know it, right? Oh, you're just so good at doing that, blah, 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 whatever. It's bullshit. Um, <laughs> have clear operating principles. Know how you work. I know I hate evaluation. I hate it. You know, so somebody else is going to do it. Take advantage of tool of planning tools to balance the discipline and creativity of project management using smart goals. Recognize, understand, and master meeting dynamics. And I'm talking about when you walk into a room and you sit at a table, you need to understand how people hear messages. Because there's always that one person that says, I don't see it. And then the other one says, I don't get it. You know, so that you have to realize how to communicate the messages so that they understand it. Because I get it. I get it. What's up with you? But you have to understand that people you have to take the time to say, okay, this is this, this, and this, and they're wasting my time. I want to punch them in the face, but I'm going cool. right? So the other thing is take the hits, mistakes, the failures, but keep them in the past. Don't let them judge. Don't, don't let, just don't let it get you that you just can't move on. Have the courage to be disliked and get over it. They really, get over it. Um, but deal with your conflicts. Deal with your conflicts. Don't laugh them off. Shut them down. 
Seriously, shut them down. FOMO, the fear of missing out, has removed us from ourselves. Now, in this age of social media, please be mindful. Please be mindful because this is a whole nother discussion that we can have a conference on. You know, because it's filled with arrocon. Abichuelas. Take the time to refill your basket. Invest in yourself so that you become the most powerful version of yourself without shame. Because you have to. My community mother slash mentor, Marie Dixon, was on the community board. She served on 10 committees and countless, countless initiatives here at Barrio. At the June meeting, she would say, I'm going off the grid until September. And I was just like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? How can you possibly do that with, with everything that's going on? And she said, I have to give to myself. I give to this community enough. I have to give to myself. I have to hear my own thoughts so that I can get right, refreshed, come back stronger, because it'll still be there when I come back. And I was just like, oh, snap. So as hard as it was, this became my practice. And I realized that if I did not take time for myself, I would resent this work. <coughs> I would be angry. I would be tired. I would be unhappy, and the quality of my work would be impacted. So, the other thing is that you have to remember that your energy speaks before you open your mouth, <coughs> and people will see it. Look back to see what you have acquired so that it can clear the way for what you can achieve. The other thing is, is that Seriously, participation in this practice is not a contest. It's not a contest. And if you feel that you have to engage in some kind of crazy silent war with somebody and, and blah, 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 this is not for you. This is not for you and you need to like step off. Like just go away. <laughs> Today it is clear that you are here for a reason. Today it is clear that you want to cross over and embrace the beautiful version of yourself. Not one that is male oriented or pushed on us by society and corporations. There is a power, girl, there's a power in being a Latina that is magical. And I ask you today to tap in and shine. Shine and begin your power transformation. You know, sometimes oh, there's a lot playing in our head, but you are the peacemakers, the light, the grounding element of the universe and bridges of change. But sometimes we are also that negative story that plays in our head over and over. I'm too short, I'm too fat, I got my cap in my teeth, my hair's whatever. Give yourself permission to thrive. Give yourself permission to excel. And, in, and just enjoy the infinite opportunities and possibilities of this world. It is never, never, never too late to get past your acceptance and comfort with regret and settling. You have to demand for more for yourself. Why fit in when you can stand out? Stand out. Now, you remember that feisty little girl, right? The one that didn't give a damn, and those that know me know that that's, the, that's not the word that I would use. Because um, I would say that didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I have to. I'm sorry, I promised I wasn't gonna, I promised, I promised. I was, but you know, it's me. Fulfill, find your way back to her voice. Fulfill the vision that she has of you. Have the audacity to be authentic and you will shine, and you will succeed. But this only happens, only happens if you believe that you deserve it. Right? Right? And if someone does not appreciate
appreciate the fullness and, and beauty of you, do not waste your time trying to seek their approval. Be proud of your scars. They have everything to do with who you are, your strength, and what you have endured. They are a treasure map to your unique power. And please do not tell me that you're waiting for that perfect novella moment. <laughs> where everything is in order, and you create the light, and all that stuff. Because you know we get obsessive like that, right? Just like that, blah, 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 blah. No. Just, just do not wait for permission from outside sources. Unlock, unlock your self-set mental boundaries. It is time for you to break out of your pretty, even though it's pretty, your pretty gilded cage and do the work, do the work. So at the beginning of my talk, I, I you know, I talked about what? The, power, the shoulders we stand on the power of identity. I shared some organizing tips and practices for soul shining and power transformation. But I also asked for a blessing to spark a light of inspiration in you. And I want you to just imagine that that light is lit and it's just spreading and it's going to your heart and it's going to your mind. And it is removing all your doubts, all your fears just everything and just filling you, filling you, filling you with all that you deserve. Can life change in one day? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So step on the battlefield and don't forget your red lipstick. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>